Uh, today, I just wanted to go through the basic steps of Ivor Lewis esophagectomy. So, this video was uh, is basically meant for educational purposes, as well as if I mean anyone uh, who is in general practice or in the medicine side wants to understand how we go through the Ivor Lewis esophagectomy. Ivor Lewis esophagectomy is done usually for the G junction adenocarcinomas or lower thoracic esophagus adenocarcinomas. It is not performed for squamous cell or mid, mid thoracic esophagus uh, adenocarcinomas either. It involves a midline abdominal incision and a right thoracotomy. However, these things are now very much possible with minimal invasive approaches also. The concept of Ivor Lewis esophagectomy is an anastomosis in the right thorax. So the first step which we do is a midline abdominal incision wherein the right gastroepiploic artery is palpated and uh, its fitness as the blood supply for the gastric conduit. So basically uh, the stomach tube in esophagectomy is made on the basis of right gastroepiploic artery. So first we confirm that the arcade of the stomach is good, right gastroepiploic is, uh, artery is good and then we go ahead with the uh, surgery. We definitely, as always, we do an exploration of the abdomen first and confirm the absence of liver metastasis or any other nodal disease or mental metastasis. Then, if you see on the screen here, the left triangular ligament of the liver is divided and the left lobe of the uh, liver is retracted. We even sometimes fold it on itself and we put it under a Thompson's retractor copper blade that uh, saves the assistant and we are able to get much better visualization. Once that is done, then the gastrohepatic ligament, the lesser curvature is opened from here. A gastrohepatic ligament is incised as close to the liver as possible so that we take the entire lesser uh, omentum, lesser sac with us. If you don't take the lesser sac in the specimen, then we land up leaving the disease behind there, which is the place where we will most commonly see the recurrence. So once the gastrohepatic ligament is incised as close to the liver as possible, we also make sure that there's no replaced left hepatic artery before we go ahead. The phrenoesophageal ligament, that is the ligament between the diaphragm and the esophagus is inside, incised and the esophagus is circumferentially dissected all around at the hiatus. Uh, if he's the right hand of the surgeon, is the energy device, he is circumferentially dissecting the uh, esophagus from here. Once we do that, the hiatus is widened by incising the crura. In case if the tumor is also bulky here, we sometimes take a cuff of the diaphragm along with the specimen to make sure that our CRM is free and we get a R0 resection. Once it is done, uh, the esophagus is encircled with a large drain. Either we use a Penrose drain uh, or we use an umbilical tape in our routine Indian scenarios. The lower esophagus is mobilized by some traction on the stomach and we confirm that the tumor is very much resectable. Once we do that, then uh, we start going ahead with the mobilization of the stomach to form the stomach conduit uh, by incising the lesser commental sac at least two centimeters beyond the right gastroepiploic artery so that the uh, margin uh, the marginal arcade the arcade is maintained well the dissection is carried uh, to the level of pylorus this side and proximally to the first short gastric vessels see as for the marking here the short gastric vessels are divided they are ligated and divided or uh, as we normally do use a harmonic scalpel we we ligate uh, we transect incise these vessels closer to the stomach here so that if in case of any slipped blade or a slipped ligature we have enough of a stump towards the spleen side to mend, to control it less unless uh, we land up uh, the splenectomy okay so the short gastric vessels are either individually ligated or secured with a harmonic scalpel this is the uh, uh, this is a stomach which is being lifted off. We have held it here. This is a right gastroepiploic arcade uh, where my cursor is moving. And uh, this is how we have divided the omentum and the short gastrics. Now the stomach, if you see now, is held up of the incision out and the uh, celiac axis here is exposed. So this is the greater curvature of the stomach. This is a left gastric artery, splenic artery, which is a tortuous vessel which goes on the upper border of the pancreas. This is the pancreas and this is a common hepatic artery. So now we expose the celiac axis, all the small vessels and the lymphatics superior to the pancreas. So we normally go right at the upper border of the pancreas and keep dissecting the alveolar tissue here. All the lymph nodal tissue at the celiac trifurcation is swept and it is included in the specimen. The left gastric vessels resected and doubly ligated 
we hold a left gastric vessels uh, the specimen part with a long thread to mark for the pathologist now the lesser curvature of the stomach is mobilized from the hiatus what we have already dissected of the esophagus from to the right gastric artery the entire gastrohepatic ligament is included with the specimen only to resect the lesser curvature lymph nodes in completion the posterior dissection continues and often includes part of the left crust of diaphragm the duodenum is cockerized so much so that uh, the c has turned into an i up to the ivc and the pylorus is able to go to the uh, the hiatus so this would mark the completion of the uh, mobilization part a pyloric drainage is then performed we i personally prefer a pyloromyotomy however there are different techniques available including a pyloroplasty a pyloromyotomy a finger fracture technique and some don't perform anything at all the gastrohepatic tissue at the point of resection of the distal lesser curvature is cleared this point if you can see in the uh, diagrammatic representation is about six vascular arcades distal to the ge junction this would encompass the entire lesser curvature which marks a good uh, pathological dissection and a transaction limit a jejunal stomach tube is then placed about 30 to 40 cm beyond the ligament of treats at this point uh, at my institute i prefer to uh, perform the gastric conduit uh, the make the gastric tube while the abdomen is open rather than pulling it into the thorax so i perform the uh, create the gastric tube with a 100 mm linear staplers uh, endo staplers uh, sorry linear uh, staplers or else 60 mm endo staplers into four the specimen and the gastric tubes are fixed with a single suture Position is position is turned. A right posterior lateral thoracotomy is performed by a fifth intercostal space. Once the findings are confirmed, we show that there is no mets here. Also, the pleura is scored with electrocautery from posterior to the azygos down to the hiatus. In the older times, azygos vein used to be transected. However, uh, at it, the things have changed. The scenario has changed, and now we prefer to pre safeguard the azygos vein as much as possible. Uh, the inferior ligament or inferior pulmonary ligament is incised up to the IPV, and uh, the esophagus is the pleura is scored on either sides. So boundaries of dissection once they are marked, then the esophagus is dissected and circled with a umbilical tape at the level of the uh, azygos vein. And with the aid of the umbilical tape, the traction which we achieve, we are able to dissect the esophagus and the attached lymphoarillar tissue uh, along from the mediastinal bed. the thing to remember here is that the serosa of the esophagus is never to be seen if you are doing that that means you are leaving the lymphoarillar tissue behind and hence an incomplete lymph node dissection the direct branches from the aorta are clipped the dissection includes mobilization of the subcaranal lymph node uh, template which is kept intact with the specimen the pericardium is bared the vagal uh, nerve trunks are cut as the esophagus is mobilized from the lower superior mediastinum Uh, the supra azygos uh, uh, esophagus is dissected the right recurrent laryngeal lymph node is dissected the pia mediastinum is cleared once the hiatus is reached final attachments are released and all the perihiatal parahiatal lymph nodes are cleared and dissected thoracic duct is preferably nowadays safeguarded the nasogastric tube that was placed uh, at the beginning of the surgery is now withdrawn to the thoracic inlet the esophagus is stapled or else uh, as we prefer in our institute transected between two stay sutures of vicryl above a satinsky uh, below a satinsky clamp the stomach uh, with the uh, the stomach tube with the specimen is delivered carefully in the uh, chest via the hiatus with the proper orientation has to be maintained so the trick which we use is that the right stays on the right so the staple end uh, should remain above the should remain on the right side so we should be able to see the stapled end once we open the patient's stomach is pulled in the thorax that is a trick to remember the orientation uh once we done that uh, we are uh, we create a small anterior gastrostomy uh, we decide to do a we normally do a circular stapler uh, anastomosis uh, end to side esophago gastric anastomosis we uh, take a posterior suture of the esophagus with number 1 proline we insert the anvil tighten the posterior then after the gastrostomy is done anteriorly we place a circular stapler through it it's been complete we are sure of the anastomotic integrity we remove we withdraw the rice tube through the anastomosis with the help of the gastrostomy done on anteriorly we push the rice tube up through the stomach up to the pylorus the gastrostomy is then closed in two layers with 20 vicryl 
uh, the thorax is closed, patient preferably extubated on table over an ICD and shifted to the ICU. A contrast study is done on per PO, POD 7 or 9 depending on the clinical situation of the patient. This is the this is the lymphadenectomy which is done whether it is an Ivor Lewis or a transthoracic esophagectomy. It includes a periesophageal lymph nodes, subcarinal lymph nodes, superior mediastinal lymph nodes including the right recurrent laryngeal, diaphragmatic lymph nodes, paracardial lymph nodes, lesser curvature in the abdomen and less uh, celiac access lymph nodes. So level 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, 9, 15, 16, 17 and 20 are included. This template does not change depending on what kind of surgery. The only thing which changes is the site of the anastomosis. In Ivor Lewis esophagectomy, we do the anastomosis in the right thorax. This surgery is performed only for GE junction adenocarcinomas or lower thoracic esophageal adenocarcinomas not to be performed for squamous cell or mid-thoracic esophageal carcinomas. For any queries, please do contact drpriya at gmail.com. My WhatsApp number as well as my website www.thethoracicclinic.com uh, glad to have helped you hope that we've had a good time see you again thank you